Electronic aids, I'm a, getting really getting into them. The thing about them I've found is you have to trust them and build up a trust with them. And if you've been riding particularly analog bike or more older style bikes, it's something that your tentative, your brain is more acute at trying to control everything with sort of a manual input. Big fan of them, particularly it makes riding faster, safer at the end of the day. The caveat to that is it makes it faster also. So at some point there's a, there's a bit of a give. The electronic management systems and rider aids are a massive bonus and should you should work with them and you should experiment with them. A lot of the modern superbikes, they have this six axis system which measures acceleration, deceleration, uh, angle of lean, and how whether the bike's wheeling or doing a stoppy. So it, it's measuring basically the position of where the bike is and what's kind of happening with the bike. One thing you always got to remember about these rider aids is they are reacting to a situation. Let's say if it's a, a rear wheel slide that you're coming out of the corner and the bike starts to step out, they have to react to that. So it's always they're controlling what's happening as opposed to stopping it happening in the first place. So you have to always remember it's reactive, not proactive. Yes, this was very little to do with rider aids other than the other rider aided it. Enough said. The BM system, is you can set it up for rider race pro mode one, two and three. Within each of those settings, you can alter engine braking, suspension and throttles, uh, feel and so on, and, and anti-wheeling. You can alter loads of settings and then go out and try it. And while you're riding around on the bike, you can flick through on the mode button uh, and drop from race pro mode one, two and three. You can change them while you're riding around. So you can have, let's say, all of the settings identical apart from one that you're actually trying. Let's say it's a wheelie control and you can have it turned off, on and on maximum and feel the effect of it. If you're riding at certain tracks where, like at Porto Mayo, it's virtually impossible to stop the bike wheeling. You're trying to accelerate hard out of a slowish corner. And that's where the electronic aids, I think, really come in. Uh, so sometimes in certain situations, let's say, for instance, you come into a wheelie point, you can either let the electronics stop the bike from, from lifting up by having a, a maximum amount of wheelie. So literally, as soon as it feels the suspension come into the, the topping out sort of situation, it, it realises that it's, it's potentially going to do that. So before the wheel leaves the floor, it already starts to back the throttle out. Um, I mean, on most of the modern ones now, you can have a little wheelie or a bigger wheelie or a massive wheelie. It's, it's entirely how much you've got dialed into the bike. But again, as I said to you, the, the, it's always reacting to what's happening as opposed to stopping it happening in the first place. So that's what, a really important thing you've got to try and remember. But finding a setting which works for you, because of course on the rest of the track, where there's, if there's only a small wheelie point, it might be a major downside. So sometimes you have to sometimes deal with the problem as, as opposed to try to let the electronics completely cover it because it'll affect the bike somewhere else on the track. So it's, it's an interesting dynamic that you have to figure out of how, to, how much electronics you, you play about with on the bike. Yeah, the, the engine braking with a 1,000cc engine, with, particularly if you're high in the rev range and you shut the throttle, it, the engine braking is, is, is enormous. If you had full engine braking, i.e. Uh, the engine management system, you'd kind of turned it off. As soon as you shut the throttle with a heavy front brake, you'd almost lock the back wheel and the back of the bike would be fishtailing all over the place, which obviously is a real nightmare when you're, trying, when you're trying to stop in a hurry. So obviously the engine braking, what that does, and it's adjustable, is you can increase the amount of throttle bodies, how much they actually open. So if, regardless of what your hand's doing, if your throttle grip is closed, You'll see on the data the throttle get will be zero, but the engine braking, depending on how you've set it, will be increasing the amount of throttle opening to help to keep the bike straight. And you can see this in the data. I try to run mine with as much engine braking as I can get away with, and, but it's a bit of a balance to try and keep the bike stable under braking. I tend to like to keep the bike as, as upright and as straight as I can to assist the bike. You've also got ABS. Uh, the ABS Pro system on the BM, if you ride it in a road mode ABS and you're riding on the track, you'll find it problematic because the bike will basically not want to stop and it'll be, it's quite intrusive. 
the BM system, you can back it off almost completely and go into like a race ABS mode, which I find is really, really good. What I've found, generally speaking, is the only way you really feel it's working, the ABS, is in the sense that the lever starts to go kind of soft. It feels like you kind of, you've overheated your brake pads or whatever. It's just like it ends up with a soft lever. But the bike still stops really, really well. You've got obviously traction control, which effectively is how much it allows a percentage of wheel spin because with a 200 horsepower bike nowadays, you're going to have wheel spin even low down the engine RPM range because you've got a lot of torque and ultimately a lot of power. And even though you've got a big sticky tire, that is going to start to move. If you look at data, for instance, I was at Porto Mayo recently and coming onto the start finish straight, there's a fast right hand and over a rise onto the start finish straight. The bike's at sort of 50 plus degrees of lean and the wheel can be doing as much as 40 kilometers an hour faster than the, front, than the front wheel. So it's genuinely really started to spin. And that of course starts to kick the back of the bike out more. And this is where bikes which have it, and the BMW certainly has, it has a slide control which allows you a percentage, it allows a, a certain amount of movement in the bike the, effectively the back of the bike to start to step out with you still on full gas but eventually it gets to a point where it says nope that's enough and it starts to buy, dial the throttle back and it brings the bike sort of back in line but it allows a percentage of slide i.e the back of the bike stepping out because they've got potentiometers now on the handlebars so it knows literally how much opposite lot you've got on the bike as you're coming out of the corners brake slide assist and from the understanding of it Essentially, what they're trying to create is an easy way of approaching a corner to get the back of the bike kicked out, you know, a la Moto2 style, drifting the bike into corners. The slide assist is for riders who uh, are, are more comfortable using both brakes, front and rear brake, going into the corner. And what it's measuring, of course, is the angle of the bike, whether it's lent over ever so slightly, because if it's absolutely vertical, the bike is more likely to go in a straight line under braking. If there's any angle of lean left or right on the bike and particularly braking hard with the front brake, the bike then effectively will start to pivot on the front wheel and if it's leaned slightly left, the back of the bike will come right and opposite if you go in into a right-hander. You basically approach a corner, you start to brake, but if, what you do is you put a lot of back brake on, basically stand on the back brake, which essentially starts to lock the back wheel the back of the bike will start to pivot one way or the other and then you keep the brake on and then once the handlebars have turned to a certain degree the ABS starts to kick in and it starts to straighten the bike up and then ease the brake off and keep the, it basically keeps the bike floating going into corners. I think it's more about people who want to style their riding up rather than actually stop the bike going into corners. The way the vast majority of riders who do this more naturally is they'll effectively they'll do the same thing but using predominantly front brake because when you brake really hard with the front brake of course most of the weight goes onto the front wheel so the back wheel becomes light and that's where the pivoting kind of thing starts to happen. The, the downside to that of course is at some point you're holding the bike in that slide essentially by the pressure you've got on the front brake so at some point it's all down to time and when you release the brake because of course if you release the brake too early the bike snaps straight effectively too early or if you brake too late and you're still trying to stop you go past the turning point with the bike still effectively going sideways so it's all about the timing of the release now suppose this is where this ABS slide comes in is, is that slide is um, artificial to keep the bike sliding when there's still sort of too much weight on the back wheel I think it's possibly a little bit over the top not tried it so maybe i'm talking out of turn but it'd be an interesting thing to try all these features that they have on the on the bikes are adaptable to you but you've kind of got to get used to how they work not only physically setting them up but how they work out on track and my best suggestion there is by all means try them but always start on the safe side i.e your anti-wheelie always start with it on maximum and then kind of back it off so, so it doesn't kind of shock you too much if the thing does start uh, leaping out of corners and stuff like that. 
your traction control always start with lots of traction control on so you, you get used to the idea of opening the throttle and when you feel you're opening the throttle and the bike feels like it's not kind of going anywhere you'll see your traction lights on all the time uh, but effectively what you need to start doing is backing the traction control off which will start allowing the wheel to slide a little bit slide a little bit more slide a little bit more and you'll start to feel that in the movement in the bike but the, the thing is is you do you, you've got already got around the idea of opening the throttle so you're not really afraid of opening the throttle what you've got to do is get comfortable then with how much the bike starts to move so there's lots of systems on most of the bikes start in a comfortable safe zone with them and then effectively back them off so you get to know each of the feelings and don't do two things at once don't say oh, I'm going to try wheelie control and I'm going to try this all in one go because you never know how one will affect the other so you're better off going through one setting at a time you know going from A to Z in the settings so that you know kind of where you are with that setting and then try something else and then go from A to Z in that setting or 1 to 10 in that setting.